This is the Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, Express Version, day 187. How to cope with the challenges of life. President John F. Kennedy said, We stand today on the edge of a new frontier, but the new frontier of which I speak is not a set of promises, it's a set of challenges. It sums up not what I intend to offer the American people, but what I intend to ask of them. Life is a set of challenges, problems and hassles. We sometimes imagine that if we could just deal with the immediate challenge that we're facing, all our problems would be over. But life is not like that. If we resolve one problem, others are just around the corner. The temptation is to see these challenges as preventing us from carrying out the ministry God has given us. In actual fact, dealing with the problems is the ministry. As one former Bishop of Kensington put it, these are not the problems associated with the ministry, they are the ministry. The Bible is true to life. The psalmist faced pain and distress. Paul faced false accusation and frustration of being kept in prison on trumped-up charges. The kings in the Old Testament faced battles and a massive building project challenge. Our world is facing major challenges with a scourge of racism, modern slavery, climate change, mass starvation, wars and terrorism. As I read the passages for today, I'm reminded that the relatively minor challenges, problems and hassles that I face are nothing compared to what the people of God have faced in the past and still face around the world today. From Psalm 81 I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you by the waters of Meribah. Talk to God about the problems. Are you in a time of testing? God sometimes allows us to be tested as he allowed his people to be tested by the waters of Meribah. But he does not want you to face the tests and challenges of life alone. You can talk to him about your problems. God says, I removed the burden from their shoulders. In your distress you called and I rescued you. I took the world off your shoulders, freed you from a life of hard labor. You called to me in your pain. I got you out of a bad place. Whatever situations or difficulties you may face, you can bring them to God in prayer. God removed their burdens and rescued them in their distress. The psalmist starts, therefore, with worship, celebration and joy. Sing for joy to God our strength. Lord, thank you that you are my strength and joy as I face challenges and problems in life. Lord, I call on you today to rescue me. New Testament from Acts 25 Three days after arriving in the province, Festus went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem where the chief priests and the Jewish leaders appeared before him and presented the charges against Paul. They requested Festus, as a favour to them, to have Paul transferred to Jerusalem, for they were preparing an ambush to kill him along the way. Festus answered, Paul is being held at Caesarea, and I myself am going there soon. Let some of your leaders come with me, and if the man has done anything wrong, they can press charges against him there. When Paul came in, the Jews who'd come down from Jerusalem stood around him. They brought many serious charges against him, but they could not prove them. Then Paul made his defense. I have done nothing wrong against the Jewish law or against the temple or against Caesar. A few days later, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were spending many days there, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. He said, There's a man here whom Felix left as a prisoner. When I went to Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and asked that he be condemned. I told them that it is not the Roman custom to hand over anyone before they have faced their accusers, 
and have had an opportunity to defend themselves against the charges. When they came here with me, I did not delay the case but convened the court the next day and ordered the man to be brought in. When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus, whom Paul claimed was alive. I was at a loss how to investigate such matters, so I asked if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial there on these charges. But when Paul made his appeal to be held over to the emperor's decision, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I'd like to hear this man myself. He replied, Tomorrow you will hear him. Trust that God is in control. Faith means trusting God. Faith, as C.S. Lewis wrote, is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted in spite of your changing moods. It is hard to trust God when everything seems to be going wrong. Luke records Paul's trial in a very objective and unemotional way. This must have been an extraordinarily frustrating time for Paul. This great leader of the church, evangelist and teacher, is locked away, apparently unable to do what he's called to do. He's in custody, enduring the physical constraints and discomfort of imprisonment. Serious charges are brought against Paul. He defends himself by pointing out that he's done nothing wrong. But Festus was more interested in what people thought than in what was right. Our first question should always be, what is the right thing to do? But Festus was more concerned about popularity than justice. In the end, Paul appeals to Caesar. When King Agrippa arrives, Festus discusses Paul's case with him. Festus says, When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus, whom Paul claimed was alive. The resurrection of Jesus should always be at the heart of the message we proclaim. The only accusation that could be made to stick was that Paul was preaching that Jesus was alive, yet numerous other accusations and false charges had been brought against him. For Paul, in the midst of all these difficulties and frustrations, it must have been very hard to see what good might possibly come out of all the dishonesty, delays and dithering in his trials. Yet, as always, God was at work for good. As Paul himself wrote, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. First, in the short term, it resulted in an opportunity for Paul to speak to Agrippa. After hearing all about Paul, Agrippa said to Festus, I'd like to hear this man myself. In times of frustration and hassle, you never know when opportunities may appear, but sometimes they do. Second, in the medium term, It resulted in Paul being sent to Rome. Paul had expressed his desire to go to Rome to preach the gospel, and the Lord himself had spoken to Paul, saying that he would testify in Rome. It was because of what took place in Paul's defense of himself that he was eventually sent to Rome. Third, in the long term, 2,000 years later, vast numbers of people have read Paul's story and been encouraged to know that he too faced false imprisonment, accusations and criticism. I suspect that Paul would have been astonished in the midst of all these difficulties to know how much good was going to come of them. You may never know in this life how God uses your faithfulness in the face of challenges. Lord, thank you that you are with us whenever we face accusation and criticism. Thank you that through all these frustrations of life, you work together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Old Testament from 2 Kings 12-14 to In the twenty-third year of Joash, son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned for seventeen years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord by following the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, which he had caused Israel to commit, and he did not turn away from them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel, and for a long time he kept them under the power of Hazel, king of Aram, and Ben-Hadad, his son. Then Jehoahaz sought the Lord's favor, and the Lord listened to him, 
and he saw how severely the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. The Lord provided a deliverer for Israel, and they escaped from the power of Aram. Now, Elisha had been suffering from the illness from which he died. Jehoash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. Elisha said, Get a bow and some arrows, and he did so. Take the bow in your hands, he said to the king of Israel. When he'd taken it, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window, he said, and he opened it. Shoot, Elisha said, and he shot. The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Aram, Elisha declared. You will completely destroy the Arameans at Aphek. Then he said, take the arrows, and the king took them. Elisha told him, strike the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. Hazel, king of Aram, oppressed Israel throughout the reign of Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion and showed concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. To this day, he has been unwilling to destroy them or banish them from his presence. Take every opportunity that God gives you. In the middle of this rather depressing history of the kings of Israel and Judah, there's an incident in the life of Elisha that encourages you to take every opportunity that God gives you, to be persistent and never give up. Leaders are a mixed bag. Some do evil in the eyes of the Lord. Some do right in the eyes of the Lord. God is extraordinarily gracious. And when Jehoahaz, who did evil in the eyes of the Lord, sought the Lord's favor, the Lord listened to him. Whenever you seek the Lord's favor, he listens to you. In this list of leaders, Joash was probably the best example. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, even if it was only for part of his reign. Joash took on a building project. Like many projects, it took far longer than he expected. But by the 23rd year of King Joash, the priests still had not repaired the temple. The king calls a meeting and asks, why aren't you repairing the damage done to the temple? They do eventually get on with the work. They collect the money they need. They all acted with complete honesty and progress was made. Of course, today, God's temple is no longer primarily a physical building, but the people of God. Our money and efforts should go into building up the people of God in number, evangelism, in maturity, discipleship, and in care of the community, social transformation. However, sometimes we need buildings for this, and it's not wrong to spend money on the infrastructure of church when necessary. As well as the challenge of buildings, the people of God faced the challenge of battles. In particular, in this passage, we see how they had to face Aram. Elisha says to the king of Israel, Get a bow and some arrows. Take the arrows. Strike the ground. The king struck it three times and stopped. Elisha said, You should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. I remember reading these verses in 1998 after we'd done the first Alpha initiative inviting the nation to Alpha to hear the good news about Jesus. We were wondering whether to do a second initiative or wait another year or so. I sensed as I read these verses that we should keep on striking the ground again and again. Whatever challenges you're facing today, keep praying, keep trusting, keep looking for opportunities to serve God and never, ever give up. Lord, as we face challenges ahead, give us a determination not to give up, but to persevere and carry through to the end. Pepper adds, In 2 Kings chapter 12 verse 18, it tells us that Joas brought off King Hazal of Aram just as he was about to attack him, giving him all the treasures of the temple. Sometimes sending a present to someone who is angry with you works rather well.